remote sensing and GIS. So today we are going to discuss about digital image processing. What are the tools and techniques we are going to apply on the digital image that is remotely sensed data which are captured by the sensors and satellites. So here we have till now discussed the image interpretation techniques, strategies, how it can be applied and how is data format and storage. So now we are going to see further that digital image processing contains many types of functions and techniques and we need to apply that so the analysis what we are doing will probably help us to analyze the problem what we want to solve from the digital data that is the remotely sensed data. First of all, let us see what is digital image processing. The tasks are performed on digital image by using the image algorithms. So basically, what type of digital processes we are going to give on our digital image that is remotely sensed data will be having some mathematical algorithms behind it, right? Let us see what are they and how are they helpful to us. What are the functions we can do on our digital image? So first of all, you can see here, we are going to do the pre-processing of image. Then we are going to do the image enhancement. Then we are going to do the image transformation. And lastly, we are going to perform the image classification. And doing this all, we are going to do the data integration and data merging in GIS background, right? So this is what we are just performing the digital image techniques on our digital image and then we are going to integrate this image what we have formed what we have analyzed to our GIS background and hence we are going to solve the day-to-day -day basis problems. Now first of all let us discuss about the methodology for digital image processing. So basically here digital image is what it contains the initial statistic extraction then it has the image rectification and restoration then it has an image classification technique which consists of supervised and unsupervised. We also have image enhancement. So after doing image enhancement, we are going to classify the image. This is how is whole the digital image process goes on. Let us see further. Data is classified, that is classified output. Then we have the post-processing operations and lastly we have the accuracy report. What will be the output when we do the digital image processing? So basically the output will be the data maps, reports and the data formations, right? What we require for the analysis in our GIS background. Now, first of all, we are going to discuss about the pre-processing of image, which is known as radiometric corrections. Now, we all know that radiometric corrections are provided to our image when we order the image from the remote sensing centers, right? So radiometric and geometric, both are the corrections provided initially to the image itself. Now let us see, before providing any tools and techniques on the image, radiometric and geometric corrections are required and that is why it is known as pre-processing of image. First of all, what is radiometric correction? Why it is required? What are the source behind it? So here, firstly, radiometric correction is basically having flaws and deficiency in the image. What is flaws and deficiency in the image? It is might be due to the illumination source, it is might be due to the sensor error, it is might be due to the atmospheric error through which it is capturing the energy. It happens here that there are two types of error. First is internal error and the external error. In the internal error and external error, both occurs in the sensor. Internally, sensors have some deficiency into it which needs to be calibrated before using it. And next has the external sources that is geometric corrections and that has something related with the satellite platforms. So here we are going to see first of all that is radiometric error occurs due to the variation in scene illumination, viewing pattern of sensor and between the sun and image of the surface and the sensor. So we need to error, recognize the error. What error does it have when the sensor is imaging the surface of Earth? Next, you have noise in the image that is due to the data recording and transmission. And lastly, you have to do the physical modeling and atmospheric errors to be removed from it, which is known as radiometric corrections. So these are the radiometric corrections provided on the image on the very first process. Now, we are going to discuss about the geometric corrections. What are the geometric corrections? 
basically geometric corrections are provided the motion of scanning system it is due to the sensor and the satellites only so it is due to the motion due to the scanning of it perspective of the sensor optics then we have the curvature and rotation of earth relief terrain and the platform altitude and attitudes of the sensors what we have sent on the platform and that is what is taking the image now we are going to see here first of all you can see what is the error is known as skew scan that is also known as scan skew here it is due to the forward motion of the platform it might create some error while the satellite is rotating and taking the image so if satellite that is known as platform on which the sensors are kept if it gets some error while moving further it will do the distortion to the image next you can see here we have the platform velocity according to the velocity of satellite the image will change and there might some error occurs if and when if properly the image is been not imaged by the sensor then we have the earth rotation it happens that earth rotation sometimes sensor scans the terrain and it rotates with not with the speed and sensors has some problem into it and that it has a earth rotation problem and lastly attitude and altitude this both are related to the sensor parameters and the height at which the image is been taken it is related to the horizontal image how it is gathering and if it has some uh, error into it it is due to the altitude of the sensor and it might have attitude and altitude both related together so properly predefined parameters should be given to the sensor now we are going to introduce the new terminology which is known as image enhancement what is image enhancement and why it is required basically we are doing the enhancement of image to have a better quality of image as we all do in our regular image also why image enhancement is necessary in remotely sensed data that is for the satellite image it gives us the maximum information it makes image easier to interpret it don't misinterpret the features and lastly the distortion is removed and we get the better visualization of our data next method to enhance the image basically to enhance the image there are two types of method that is point method and local method point is known as radiometric and local is known as partial enhancement also so basically when i am talking about enhancing an image what it happens we are just enhancing and we are just playing with the pixels of image which is known as enhancement of image so here in point i am going to do the pixel changes pixel intensity value changes to the individual pixel only but in spatial filtering you can see here spatial enhancement that is local operations applied on the image is basically done on the basis of the neighborhood analysis also neighborhood pixels also so this is known as point operation and local operations right with what we are doing so basically we are playing with the intensities with the histograms of the image that indicates what is the color what is the brightness what is required what is not required which features are properly seen is been done in the enhancement of image so basically we have two types first type is known as image reduction and second type is known as image magnification image reduction means we are just deleting the rows and columns that is the pixel values from the image and what is image magnification we are zooming the image we are getting doubling the pixel values and we are seeing it the intensity values of each pixel so in a simple sense deleting of row and column is known as image reduction and doubling in row and column or adding in row and column more to it more pixel values means image magnification right now let us first of all discuss the contrast enhancement basically contrast means we all have seen in our mobile phones also we have a option of contrast means we are playing with the pixel intensity brightness values brightness will increase and brightness will decrease as per our requirement what type of range we are keeping that is contrast enhancement in digital image contrast enhancement can be seen from the histogram histogram values will give us the maximum and the minimum value so it will gives us what is the maximum intensity value of the pixel and minimum intensity value of the pixel that is known as contrast enhancement we have the linear contrast enhancement 
we also have the maximum minimum stretch in the saturation stretch so first of all let us discuss maximum and minimum stretch of contrast enhancement what is that so original maximum and minimum value are assigned to the newly specified data set utilizes full range of available brightness so here what i am doing you can see here the image our intensity value grayscale value that is histogram values from what to what 0 to 255 what i am doing here i am giving here value 45 and 206 you can see here right but minimum and maximum stretch will do what 0 to 45 0 to 44 is not given any value so i am doing the enhancement of that pixel values so 0 to 45 is also given the value and 206 to 255 is also given the value that means i have done the enhancement tool on it which is known as maximum and minimum stretch you can see the before stretch and the after stretch what i have shown in the figure this is what i have done the enhancement and by doing this i can get the proper pixel values now you can see here you can see the minimum from 0 to maximum 255 all the range is being provided and this is known as minimum and maximum stretch now going to the saturation stretch what is saturation stretch which is also known as percentage linear contrast stretch basically we have here some percentage of pixels which are to be trimmed right and that remainder will be known as what saturation values you can see here you can see the orange part which is the tails of the histograms and that orange part are trimmed and the remainder are equally distributed in our histogram in the values of grayscale from 0 to 255 so this is known as saturation stretch the both orange part is known as saturation stretch now image transformation which is very much required Basically, image transformation is done so that I can particularly analyze the feature class what I want to analyze. Next, we have the image arithmetic, arithmetic operations. We are going to apply that on the pixels of image and we are going to do the analysis of image. Then we have PCT which is known as principal component transformation which we are applying to compress our data and get the information in the required bands only. Then we are going to see the tesseract cap tessel cap is basically for the vegetation indices analysis then we are going to see you can see here we have the coverage of image color space Fourier transformation and lastly we have the image fusion into it so first of all let us discuss the image arithmetic operations what are the image arithmetic operations which is very easy you can see here first of all we are going to discuss about the image addition which is you can see here if I have a co-registered image that is it having the proper projections and system I can use that image and with that image you see the date of data acquisition is same and the same interval it has been taken. So image of the given region has the same time and date of imaging then addition of multiple image can be done. You can see here I have just averaged the pixel values and new image is formed right 16 plus 56 by 2 you can get here 36 that is what my image addition right so this is how image addition is possible but when it is possible multiple image addition is possible only when you have the date of time and date of taking image should be same then only i can apply now let's go to the image addition image addition is taken at the image is taken at the same area but at different times then only i can apply this image subtraction you can see here the subtraction what i have done in the addition same has been done in the subtraction why we are doing this so we can get the proper values of the image now going to the pct what is pct principal component transformation what is that required number of band are obtained and the information is compressed into band 1 2 and 3 and data is basically compressed you can see here the left side image is very raw image and the right side is the applied pct you can see no change just they have classified the classes and we have classified here on the downside you can see water body black you can see land right all colors is been classified so how much data is required the software itself minimize the data number of bands are compressed and you can get the data in the required number only 
Now we are going to see the tesselled cape transformation. Basically, this transformation is used for the vegetation indices calculation. If in an image I want to know the vegetation indices, then tesselled cape transformation is used. Here, the very first will be showing us the brightness, second will be showing us the greenness, and third will be showing me the wetness. Here, these three things you can see here, I have shown here the image 1, 2, and 3, you can see how is this will classified. And the final output, you can see here that what are the colors and what is it indicating me, right? So this is known as tessel cape transformation. If I want wetness, greenness and uh, uh, brightness, I can use this. Now moving to the various enhancement techniques, which are very easy because it is used to identify my data. First of all, radiometric enhancement. In radiometric, histogram equalization and second, you can see what you can see, the standard deviation. Here, histogram equalization is basically given that all the values, pixel values of our image get histogramly equally distributed. Means all the pixel values get equally distributed. So I can have the feature identification clearly. Highest and the lowest value is basically obtained. You can see here the piecewise. Piecewise means I'm going to change the contrast and brightness of the image as per my requirement. As per the specific pixel, I can change it. Next, you can see haze reduction. What is haze reduction? If I want to remove the cloud from the image, haze reduction is being given. You can see the left side is the raw image, right side is what is haze reduction. Noise reduction, unwanted reflectance values is reduced. But image is getting blurred into it. So every time it is not necessary to provide the reduction, noise reduction tool. Statistical filters are generally provided to have the information related to the based on pixel. And is also improved pixel value that falls outside the area. If I don't require any area and it is showing me some misled pixel or misinterpreted image area, then special, then statistical filter is helpful to know it. So this is how all the filters applied to our analysis to enhance our image. These are the major filters we apply to our digital image that is remotely sensed data and hence we analyze our image. And then now we are going to apply the techniques of classification of image onto it. So this is very important to understand the image histogram to understand the feature classes of image and analyze image and interpret image and then we can do further processes on it and at last we can do the data integration of this image with GIS. Thank you.